and welcome to our second ever Facebook Live. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we're just going to give it 30 seconds or so for everyone to kind of get in. Um, I know we've got already a few people on the live. Jana, yeah. who have we got? We've got um, Satal, Nadine, we've got Karina on the cocktails, we've got Kirsty, Kay, Cassie, Allison, Ooh, cool. and Max. Max is in tonight too. Max is back in town. Good stuff. So, um, this is the first, we obviously did one last month. It was just us at Baked In teaching you um, Patrick's um, special sausage rolls. <laughs> but what we're going to try and do every month going forward is we're going to bring a guest in. So um, usually one of our friends, someone we've met out in the food world, not exclusively. We've got some other guests that are going to come in with completely different products. Um, but we're delighted to welcome Ben from a company called Ross and Ross. Thanks, man. Welcome, Thanks for ben. having me. Good to see you guys. Um, I think Ben is probably one of our, Ben and Ross are probably one of our first kind of foodie friends. We are um, food show buddies, I think. Food show buddies. Yeah, we yeah, met yeah. you um, back in, I know, it was about 2016, when we all went into the gift of the year and um, all got right. shortlisted for the gift of the year. And unfortunately, Ross and Ross beat us to gift of the year that year. One of those things. Um, one of their, um, their baking curing kits. So um, we're not bitter at all. You know, we're, well, we're he great was mates. Showing we're, the world, little, so. we're a little bit bitter. Because then we entered the next year and we didn't win that one either. But then neither did they. So, uh, awkward, <laughs> really. But no, thanks very much for having us here. Uh, looking pleasure. forward to it. Looking forward to it. So, what we're going to do today is we um, always use this session to reveal our bake of the month. So, for those of you who didn't watch last month um, or don't know anything about the baking club, we have a different recipe box through the letterbox every month. We keep it a complete secret, so we ship them out mm, and we wait excellent. a few days. Uh, not yet, not yet, mm, until hey, hey, we hey, reveal hey. them. So that everyone gets kind of surprised. Mm. I know some of you have baked them already because we've seen some amazing pictures. Uh, we know it's Karina's favorite recipe. I think it might be one of my favorite recipes out of everything we've done. It's, it's kind of a, a favorite type of cake for mine, but this is a particularly good one. Um, Gemma's our recipe developer. Gemma joined us last week. She couldn't be here tonight. Um, so hopefully other months we'll have Gemma kind of walking through. And I'm going to take Ben through the bake of the month. We're going to bake it together. Excellent. Um, you haven't seen this yet at all, no, so this no, is completely... No. Uh, I've baked a couple of times, but I'm not an expert. Gemma's definitely our expert. So uh, we're going to bake it. Then we've got a little fun game. Last week, I was quizzed on sausages. Yeah, good uh, questions, pretty well. though. Very solid <coughs> questions. How many did you get? Uh, I got about six. 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 I think I got about six. Loosely um, about sausages. So we've got, mm. a quiz for, we've got a quiz for Ben. They make um, salmon kits, baking curing kits, salmon curing kits. Um, you make spice rubs, yep, um, barbecue rubs oils, and jams, barbecue yeah, rubs. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so again, Ben's going to have a chance to tell you about their products, which are amazing. Um, we're going to ask you questions about fish, which is going to be your domain um, experience today. You're going to be yep. expert in mm -hmm. fish. That's it. Um, Patrick's um, creative questions again. So watch out for that in the middle. That's your chance to win some goodies. So we've got this amazing bundle, which we've put together along with Ross and Ross. You've got their big salmon curing kit. You've got a baking curing kit. You've got all four of our medium-sized baking kits. You've got cinnamon bun, chopped mallow melts, yep. sticky toffee pudding, and our brownie kit. So all this is worth about 80 pounds. So we're going to send this out mm -hmm. to the winner of the competition. Uh, Patrick will talk more when he does the quiz about how you win that. But stay tuned. Around about the middle, we'll be doing that. Cool. Um, then Ben is going to take us through, and he's going to basically teach Patrick how to make and we're going to cure some salmon together. Cure some yep, salmon and make it. some we're going bellinis. We're going to cure some uh, beetroot salmon and make a starter and some bellinis as well. So yeah, so if you're a fish uh, lover, it's going to be amazing. Um, you're going to talk through your products and then there's loads of time at the end for questions. Yep. Uh, so I think Bring we're it. pretty much ready. We do have a few offers on today and I'll do that before we do the reveal. So we've got an offer on baked in. So we can um, get two of our past baking club boxes. Uh, it's a complete surprise. It's a lucky dip. It won't be this month's box. It definitely won't be this, but it could be any of our other boxes. You get two of those. They're normally nine pounds each plus delivery, but we're doing two for 10 pounds, including delivery. So it's a great offer. They've got good shelf life on. Um, I think most of you on the, on the live, or, or some of you are certainly are members of the baking club and you know the kind of boxes, uh, but this is a great way to get your hands on a couple of our really popular pass boxes, awesome. but it definitely won't be this month's box. What's um, the code? The code is, I don't know what's the code. <laughs> FB double dip. FB double dip. Um, Jana is going to post a link in the comments to the products on our website because it's a bundle of two, so you can't get to it. You need the link to get through it. We'll post that a few times through the Facebook Live. So it's FB double dip, and that code is valid until midnight on Tuesday the 21st, which is tomorrow night for everyone watching live. But Tuesday the 21st at midnight, that code will expire. So get in there quick. Um, we've got limited supply. Uh, so yeah, get those orders in. We also have. Ben and Ross have put together a deal. That's it. And that's for a half price salmon curing that's kit. That's it, so you were doing our, our salmon curing kit. So <laughs> we're going to be doing one. It's got three cures and it's got a beetroot cure, it's got a gin cure, and it's got a smoke cure. So it's got everything in there that you need. You buy the salmon separately. Now it's slashing that to half price. So it's going to be going out to you for £11.50. 
plus postage of uh, 395. And the code is? Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. The code is uh, baked in 50, and you need to go to the Ross and Ross Food website. So it's www.rossandrossfood.co.uk. And if you go into the shop, buy that and put the code baked in 50, as in this lovely company, baked in 50, you will get that discount. And that's live until tomorrow night, Tuesday, the 21st Correct. of midnight as well. We also have a baking club offer that's going on for anyone watching the lives. You can try your first box in the baking club for 2.99. Um, with uh, no mm. commitment. Um, you can cancel it straight away if you don't like it, but you will love it. Um, the code for that is uh, Facebook Live 299, or one word. And again, Jana will pop that in the comments. So that's your chance to join the Baking Club. If you join this month, you'll get next month's box. So you won't get this box, but you can buy this box on our website as the Baker <laughs> Month. So I think, have I missed anything? I think, so I think we covered off. You've missed gin and tonics. I have, I've oh. missed a drink. So the other thing we do is we always ask our guests to mm. give us their favourite tipple, and we, like, we always like to have a little drink when we're baking. Um, what's, your, so what's your favourite uh, gin? Sorry, it's the gin and tonic. It's the gin and tonic, which is Ben's favourite. So my, yeah, my, my favourite gin, actually, at the moment is uh, Cotswold Gin. From Obviously, we're based up in the Cotswold, so mm -hmm. uh, here's the Cotswold Distillery. Cheers. Um, cheers, guys. Chin up, yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, Jenna. Cheers, guys. <coughs> so, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Mm. Very Just nice. the ticket. It's one of my favourites as well. Mm. Last week we had everything what? seems to be my favourite. Last week's was my favourite. This week is my second favourite. Yeah. So, what's the audience favourite gin? Yeah, right. definitely. If you're a gin and tonic fan, tell us what your favourite um, uh, gin is. Um, pop it in the comments. Uh, we'd love to know. Um, we actually have a gin and tonic cupcake mm. kit mm. we did last week. Uh, but we're really interested to know um, what you guys like. So, without further ado. We're going to reveal this month's bake. Let's do this it. This month's bake is one of my favourites. We used to do a retail product of this. We had a great taste of water for it. Um, and we haven't done this type of bake in the baking club yet. <laughs> oh, sorry, go on. It's a chicken um, kicking in. Sorry. We've done something similar, but this is the first time. But we've got carrot and pecan squares. <laughs> Boom! Oh, 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 yeah. Get in there. Oh, Not rehearsed oh, at all. Oh, I love that, yeah. Ooga, <laughs> ooga, ooga. <laughs> Right. We love a carrot and pecan this We do, yeah. and it is one of, genuinely one of my favourite type of cakes. We know it's Karina's favourite. Um, Karina, um, for those who don't know, Karina is um, somewhat of a celebrity amongst our baking club members. Um, always the first in there with amazing pictures um, and a really nice blog as well. So if you get a chance to go over and check Karina's blog out, then do. I'm sure Jana will hunt out a link and um, pop it in the comments. So sorry for, if I'm embarrassing you, Karina, but it's an awesome blog. So without further ado, we are going to get cracking on this yeah. in the box. Um, I'm going to get on the carrot cam. Patrick's going to get on carrot cam. Um, in a box, this is actually one of our biggest boxes. That yeah, we look at that. Out. You've got the recipe, so you always get a nice step-by-step -step recipe by Michelle Rue. Um, you've got all the ingredients so. weighed out. You've got the usual amazing Wessex Mill flour. Cool. There's a few different, there's dark, uh, there's dark brown sugar, there's caster sugar, there's um, flour, cinnamon. So that's all packaged up into the... Icing. <laughs> Camera's upside down. Oh. Mm, or oh. your eyes are upside down. <laughs> so, so that's the pre-measured out bits and pieces. So we've got everything that's in this one. Um, like I say, this is a hefty one. This one just about fits through the letterbox with the, the weight that we need to do. Um, but yeah, it's a, I think it's going to be a favourite. And we're already starting to see some of the pictures come in. So we'll be officially posting those pictures ready for the competition on Facebook after um, this live or tomorrow morning. So, Ben, have you baked carrot cake before? No, I have not. No, I, have um, you eaten a carrot cake before? Um, I have, yes. Okay. Uh, it's not uh, a time long time ago. Cake. I remember eating the frosting <laughs> of it and uh, enjoying that part. But I'm, I'm one of these people who are not into vegetables. But I am slowly <laughs> coming around to kind of getting into these things. So this my eyes are opening. This one's amazing because you know, the carrots actually mean there's less sugar in this than we yeah. would normally put in because carrots has some natural sweet. sweetness. So I had like um, a beetroot a chocolate day, cake, which is the same sort yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, and that's awesome. Cake. So courgette cake works really well yep. as well. Um, so we're going to make this. Um, the icing, it's a... It's more traditional kind of buttercream icing. Doesn't use cream cheese often. Carrot cakes use cream cheese frosting. Okay. But this one's really nice and we think it's just right. Bring it. So, first thing we do is we preheat the oven. 160 degrees, 180 degrees if it's not fan assisted. Um, so we've done that already. Um, so, I'm going to hand it over to you. So step one is yes. take a bowl. Yes, chef. Um, we Everything comes bagged, but we put it in bowls because then it's more like a cookery yeah, program. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah, feel yeah, more yeah. like a cookery pro. Okay. Um, you need a whisk, you need yep. a big bowl. So first thing to do is to mix up the sugar yep. with the oil. So you've got 200 grams of oil, and you've got the, uh, I can't remember the exact quantities of sugar, but there's brown sugar, dark that brown much sugar. That brown sugar. That much dark brown sugar and caster sugar. Boom, okay. So pop it all in, so give it a mix. We think find a whisk is quite good for this. Um, so Let's, find Let's find out. Let's find out, shall we? Mm -hmm. Start mixing up. 
Um, so we, th we think use um, sunflower oil or any kind of other vegetable oil for this works um, better than butter, we think, in this one. That's kind of quite traditional for carrot cakes is to have um, vegetable oil. I'm not sure the exact reasons why, um, but it just works really well. well. Matt, so you start there. The next thing to do is to pop in the two eggs as well. So you crack these so eggs in. crack those eggs in. Okey What's your egg cracking technique? On the side of the bowl? Oh, mm. wow. <laughs> So Boom! Let's see, okay. have a little look how much egg. So we all, don't, no, don't, that look was terrible. don't look over here, don't look over here, look over here. Look over here. That was terrible. Look. Uh, I learned a little tip, and I don't know if it's legit. I'm interested to know how other people crack their eggs, but if you crack the egg on the table. side yeah. and then break it over it, so oh, over here, no, just flat on the side, I'll and go then on, break it in. Do it on the top of your head, you smash it. I'll do it, on the top I'll of your do head, it, and you have more eggs. In. But this yeah. apparently stops you getting shell in it. I don't know, anyone on the um, well, I can live, confirm. anyone... Um, there is Anyone no confirm or deny. There is no shell in it. So that's all I can tell you. There's a bit of a spillage. Cool. But that's so, that's the way I roll sometimes. So, so we mix all that up. Get that all okay. nicely mixed up. <clears throat> There's a few lumps. You beat all the lumps out. Get yeah, it as get as many lumps out as you can. I mean, it's you know, it's it's not essential, but I would just get as many as you can okay, out. Cool. And then, uh, so I'll keep doing that. What comes next? So next thing is um, you've got a carrot. So we've gra grated the carrot already. I think uh -huh. it's um, 200 grams of carrot. What's that, like two, three carrots? It's probably like three kind of medium-sized carrots peeled. Another question for your audience. Do you peel your carrots before you grate them and put them yeah. in the carrot cake? Mm. Do you? I do. Normally? I uh -huh. always do. But someone, Gemma, some Gemma doesn't. We've got quite a few people that really? we were split when we put this in the office. Who peels their carrots? The and carrots who just washes pull. their carrots? Okay. Um, interested to know. We had some interesting answers last week to the butter in the fridge or out the fridge. Uh, I would love to know. Where Surely that one's carrots. got to be soft though, right, isn't it? The um, butter for... Yeah, it's a mixed, it's a okay. mixed bag. We won't open that can of worms again. No, let's we'll not go, go down okay, the okay. peeled carrots or not peeled carrots this time. So, um, pop the carrot in. And you've gone for a really fine <coughs> grate there, yeah? it fine. You could grate it coarsely, it doesn't really matter. We've ground this one fine. So that's 200 grams of carrots. Um, start mixing that in. Um, and then we want to start mixing in the um, flour mixture. Yeah. So... Karina peels her carrots, yeah. okay. Have we got any non-peelers? Um, Caroline from the office says nope, so I take it she's a non-peeler. <laughs> Caroline's a non-peeler, yeah, we remember that. Caroline, one. we need to discuss this and apples <laughs> again tomorrow. Um, Kay, just want no peeling needed. Oh, there's a lot of no-peelers. We've got another no-peeler, so I think yeah. actually it's going to be a reasonably split decision on this. Max I is a natural know. carrot man, mm -hmm. yeah. A natural carrot man. Cool, so just mixing that up. Yeah. Um, we could, and I think the instructions say it, so I probably told you wrong way around, but I think the flour probably goes in first. You know, it's going to be a bit I mean, these are numbered on the back here, so I've been um, following the rule. So oh, um, where's, there's no four, where's four? This is where Gemma would do an even better job than me. Four's in the wrong order. <laughs> no, no, there's a reason, there's a reason. Don't worry, we'll come to that, we'll come to that. You stick to your job. Yeah, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Cool, okay. Right, so we've got that mixed up. So yep. now we're just going to mix through. What we've got here is um, pecans. Yep. So we've got the pecans in two separate bags. These ones are not chopped, but we've chopped them up roughly. So give them a rough chop yep. and then mix cool. them through. Brand. <clears throat> okay, what's so next, It doesn't chef? have to be too well being. Just combine it kind of nicely. Yeah. So, so then so you've got your kind of carrot batter. Carrot batter? Carrot cake batter, yep. uh, which is like that. Mm probably not one of the best to like um eat straight out of the bowl you know like a, a brownie mix i will mix. be the judge of that, <laughs> sir, judge of that. i think so <clears throat> what you need to do is you need to take a square tin yep. um 18 square tin i think is the one we talk about we provide the baking paper so um we pre-lined this one for you already so thank you appreciate hassle. that what we find best with this tin is to take off about an inch lengthways of the baking paper so sort of long ways and then grease your tin or use spray oil spray oil is really handy or butter yeah. and then yeah, okay overlay them Kind of like that super easy to line it that way um non-stick tins so it doesn't matter that there's a little bit around the edge but that'll make it really easy to lift it out when yep. it's done so actually you know, i never thought about making the extra on the side to yep. lift it out that's, that's it works really well so that's eight four sheets of baking cooking. paper trim the sides down um and it's just it's a lot Useful easier tip there. Well, i used to trying to try and trim the edges and that's yeah, so all you're trying to do that thing where you absolutely on the plate and then it all falls over okay so, so yeah what that's all doing? done now so you've got a spatula here make it a bit easier to get that in there so pop it all we're done the with the, this we're done with the whiskey i'll take that from you sure. okay. cheers so does the whole lot go in whole lot goes in that's cool. right so you're a baker ben do you do any baking i do you know i i uh my girlfriend's an excellent baker and uh just in case she's watching, I'll cover that off. But she is I mean, quite just in case good. She's watching. She's definitely, watching. definitely watching. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So she's good at sneaking in things like there's a thing about beetroot, and mm -hmm. she does good carrot cakes. She does an amazing, amazing banana bread, oh, banana which I'm a huge fan of. Bread. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm very much into <laughs> that. But I've, I've recently, um, in fact, last weekend, I made some cinnamon. This is an interesting part of it. This is Can stressing we... me out. Is this stressing anyone else out? Because I've never seen this done before. <laughs> no, you see the state of me at the end. I had to put a brand new apron on for this. So uh, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Okay. Yeah. I feel like... Uh, yeah, as long as you're happy. <laughs> that's it. As long as I'm not stressing you out, Jay. <laughs> Uh, there we go, how are you doing, okay. is that all right? That's good, that's good. So it's kind of quite a, um, quite a loose it? batter, so it'll level itself nicely. I'm gonna pop this in the oven. This goes in the oven for, top of my head, 35 to 40 minutes. Um, so pop it in the oven, preheated. Um, you can tell it's done because we provide a skewer. Pop the skewer in, if it comes out clean, it's done. Yep. Um, if it comes out, it's gonna be quite a sticky cake, so it won't, won't come out perfectly clean. But you want it to come out without too much of the raw cake batter on, then you know it's done. Um, so while that's in the oven, um, the next step we need to do is we need to make the pecan brittle. So this is kind of one of the okay. more advanced steps of this yep. one. You have made pecan brittle, but have you had any kind of brittle before? Never. Okay, so basically First what we're going to make is we're going to chop the pecans, <coughs> we're going to make a toffee sauce, put it over the top. Cool. Crack it up. So, is it um, dangerous? On the hob, it is a bit dangerous. Yeah, Excellent. so we're doing this danger. for children, this is definitely for supervision. So here we've got granulated sugar. Okay. So if you pop that into the pan. What's that, a couple of uh, tablespoons? I'm um, not sure exactly. Um, okay. You've got a tablespoon of water. Yeah. Pop that in. And then we just put this on a um, mm. medium heat, fancy, Samson hob, super awesome. Look, it projects up the side of the pan, well, the lights, it, it late, so late, you can see. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty clever, isn't it? Um, that's so it. we were very fortunate to kind of work with Samson when we built this kitchen and they gave us all the state. So give it one stir, give it no, 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 mix it all up. Sorry. Mix it all up. Too excited. You're getting ahead of the game. So give yeah. it a good mix and then leave it. Now yeah. leave it. Okay. Just, I take this out. Oh, leave, leave the spoon in and step back. So Great. now we're going to leave step it. Away. <laughs> step, step away. Step away. Step away from the caramel. So we're gonna step away touch from it. the caramel. Now touch it again. Get it, touch it. No, no, don't, don't touch it. it. Don't, <laughs> touch it. <laughs> don't touch it. Don't touch it. No, no. <laughs> right, sorry, go on. So it's starting to bubble around the edges it's now. Bubble around the edges. It's going to can take two or three minutes. What we're trying to do is get that to a nice golden amber colour. Yep. Um, it will take two or three minutes. We don't want it to burn, so we're going to keep an eye on it. Yep. So it looks like it's starting to burn, then we'll give it a stir, but it should just go a nice amber colour, then we know it's ready. So while that's happening, yep. you want to come back over here. <coughs> you get another sheet of baking paper. Yep. One sheet of baking paper. Now you can use a baking tray for this, or you can use a um, chopping board or a plate, just something flat, really. Yep. So what you do is you sprinkle over this. <coughs> okay. The chopped up. Chopped up arm. So that's, the, that's bag four, and in bag four is pecans. So okay. roughly chop them. Doesn't matter too much. You want to sprinkle them. You want them in a kind of um, less. Sprinkle them less. Sprinkle them in the middle. Sprinkle oh, right. less. Yeah. So you kind of want them. <laughs> Sorry. I'm awful at teaching. Gemma's much better. We'll bring Gemma back next That's week. It, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for Gemma now, please. <laughs> that was a sprinkle. I'll give it a bit. That was a sprinkle. Yeah. What I meant was like a little sprinkle in the middle. So you want them in that kind of I mean, shape. that's the opposite of a sprinkle, that's isn't it, really? You like put sprinkle. them all in the middle. Yeah. That's what yeah. So we're going to do that. And um, we've got probably got a couple more minutes on this. Um, so while we're doing that, okay. um, tell us a bit more about you. Tell us a bit more about Ross and Ross. So, Ross and Ross. yeah, yeah. Well, so uh, Ross and Ross is, uh, is a, a kind of love of food. So I, I used to work in a pub many, many years ago. In fact, Ross and I met uh, working in a bar in Leeds when, uh, when we were kind of students. Um, and we became good friends there. And he started this business. Okay. I was working, running a pub in London. And we both kind of came together through that. So I've been there with Ross Ross for five years so now. Since the beginning, pretty, pretty much. Well, not quite the beginning, but, but you know, back in the, in the very early days when we were making completely different uh, products. But, uh, but yeah, but now we've got a range of about 35, 40 products, a lot of foodie gifts like the salmon curing kit. Um, and we do a range of barbecue rubs, jams, oils. Obviously on your website. Obviously, obviously on, on our amazing website, but a lot of farm shops and delis, a yeah. um, couple of the bigger places as well, has garden centers and, and uh, kind of all over really. So, so what's your best selling product? Best selling product is the salmon and bacon homemade curing kits. Which for one? Which one's sure, best? For sure. Uh, bacon curing kit bacon? is the best. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've sure. actually used the bacon curing kit. It's really good. It is. Uh, we put a bit of effort in. It's a bit like our cinnamon buns. Put the effort in, you get a really good result. Nothing like making. It's nice like all of this, isn't it? Yeah. And pork belly. That's it. Yeah. We yeah. ate it in the Cotswolds, we didn't did. we? Eat it in the Cotswolds. Is Cotswold taking you on holiday? We took it on holiday. Um, <laughs> taking bacon we, on holiday. Uh, took our parents away for their um, Christmas present. Um, and so you bacon. We had this as bacon sandwiches. So and we are actually there, pretty much. So you see, that's just burning edges. Yeah. Give it a little stir. Okay. Um, I don't know, Patrick, if you want to show you what this looks I like. I think I've somehow managed to log out, so I'm logging back in again. Okay, we're okay. just going into the, um, the second so... camera. Um, so we're going to take that. Um, okay. So it's. Um... It's getting quite thick and it's got sort of yeah. fine and big bubbles and starting to get a bit yeah. darker. So then what you want to do is just pour that 
over the top, the pecan. Now, roughly, do you really mean over. that? Do you, roughly or exactly? I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to over. see that. Okay, so Quite quickly, because it's going to um, sort of, yeah, bad. Is that all right? It's not bad. It's, um, it's, it's okay. It's, it's adequate. All right. Am I I'd, going covered, I'd have covered more of the pecans, personally. Um, um, but I don't, think I'm, very good. I don't think I'm very good at this bit. So, so um, are you getting this, yeah. Patrick? I'm no, doing some nothing. feedback on this. There we go. Bad. So we're, we're losing our technology. Yeah. There so go. there we go. So now what's going to happen is this is going to set. It's going to make a delicious pecan brittle. Let's get some of these um, pecans in the brittle. So um, sure. This is really hot. So maybe don't be yeah, quite don't. as um, freestyle as this. Hey, and here. Yep. Are you going to get the good Food show next month. The good, the which one? I guess we do do a lot of good food festival type things. I'll tell you what we are going to be doing. We're not a foodies festival, but we will be at Borough Market in September uh, and October, and we will also be at the um, uh, the Shikutri Awards <coughs> down in. Uh, it's at King's Cross actually, which is I think it's the sixth and seventh of June, which is run by our friends Cannon and Cannon. So we'll be at both those with all of our range. So that would be a great time to catch up with us. Is that cool? Cool. Answer the question. Cool. Right. Thank so you. Jump in. So Thanks we've got so. that the um, carrot cakes in the oven. The brittle is cooling. It'll take about five minutes or so um, until that's ready to use. So we'll put okay. that to one side. Um, next up is to make the icing. Okay, so this cool. is a fairly traditional buttercream icing. It's got some cinnamon in with the icing sugar, which gives that really nice cinnamon flavour. It's a little bit different. Um, it's 180 grams of butter. It might be 150, so I want to correct How me. How much is I in that pack of butter? Um, it's like 250? It's 250. Okay, so, so a like, pack yeah, of butter is plenty. Okay. Um, we get the piping bag, which we're going to use to decorate, so you get that in the kit. I thought it was a um, Christmas hat there for a uh, second. Have you ever filled a piping bag before? Uh, no, I'm I have teach never you a good put trick. my hand and in we were there. I was taught this trick by Carol from Sugar and Crumbs, who hopefully we're going to have on these lives soon. Okay. Um, so Carol has loads of awesome cake decorating products. Um, so basically, first step is to um, mix up the butter. It's already softened, but we find, given it a mix, um, Actually, we were supposed to use no the wooden spoon. That's right, the wooden spoon. <laughs> Sorry. You just Give that a mix up. Soft, so mix it around so it's like all like nice and easy to mix. And this um, okay. this kind of trick for um, buttercream. And again, maybe some people have got their own kind of buttercream tips and tricks. I'm sure um, some of our um, okay, that's super soft. Yeah, it's super soft. So mix it up so it's really nice and easy. But this, um, if you add the if you add the icing sugar bit by bit, it actually gives you a nice fine texture. It's a little bit grainy. I don't know if that's a, a, okay. a myth, but that's what I always do. So then what we start doing is start bit by bit adding, I'll do it for you, adding the icing sugar and cinnamon in. And if you so kind of mix that around, just um, ten percent of it at a time. Yeah, just um, it just it's helps quite to dusty, make it. Isn't it? Um, it's quite dusty. Oh, it smells, the smell of cinnamon is lovely as well. If you've got a kitchen aid, you can do this in no time, or a um, smeg mixer like we have, or a um, equivalent stand mixer. Um, you can make this super easy, you know, pop it all in, mix it up, um, but it, it only takes a couple of minutes by hand. So. It's good exercise. Yeah, so do that, a um, little bit more. Okay. Maybe it smells, there. smells, smells really We've also got a tablespoon of milk, so we'll heat the milk in at this point. Perfect. Mm -hmm. He doesn't love butter with sugar in it. Could yeah. there be a finer combination of two ingredients? Yeah. Okay, we'll go for the whole shoe. Good. Right. So do you put, would you choose to have icing on everything? Would you write, when you do your recipe, would you It depends like, what it is. Um, I think it depends. Yeah, it depends. But I mean, I mean, I mean you, me you personally, personally. Do I look like a man that likes icing? That's a bit awkward. <laughs> I, I do know. like icing. That's yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got a very sweet tooth. Um, because you don't start a business like baked in without a very sweet tooth. So. 100%, yeah, no, I totally get that. Okay, I think we're nearly there. We're nearly there, a little bit more on that. That's it. Put the rest in. And if, like, if you were making chocolate icing, is this just basically the same thing, but it's just got some cocoa powder um, in there? Yeah, you'd mix some cocoa powder up with the, um, with the icing sugar, but it would essentially be the same kind of technique. And you go for method. sort of really high quality cocoa powder? Definitely. Yeah, we always the... use really good quality um, products. So okay. it's all British sugar. We use Wessex Mill flour, which is from a farm that's local to us. You know, like 30 uh, miles they, do, the they do. They do. They uh, do. Great taste. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're huge. one of the they're kind of big flowers, yeah. and it's a fourth generation family run business. Mm, okay. The Munsies. Um, so really? a bit like our name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, we really like them. One of our kind of oldest um, suppliers. Been with us right since the beginning. So nice. The old days where we used to buy a 25 kilogram bag, and now we buy pallets. So we've got the buttercream made up. Look then, that's very tasty that as well. Just a little bit better, but yeah, so, hey. good trick for filling piping bags. They're a bit fiddly to fill, so there's a couple of things you can do. You can always find a big glass, and you can put it in the glass and fold it over the top. What I like to do is take it in your non-dominant hand. So for me, it's my left hand, so I'm going to fill it in my right hand. Okay. I'm very right-handed. You can kind of really get your hand in. Yep. Make a cavity. Right. That's and it. now fill it. So if you do that, I mean, you could do it one-handed. I mean, oh, that's do it. Yeah. You can do it yeah, like that. So okay. 
It doesn't matter if it comes around the edges because we're going to fold this over. Okay. <clears throat> so you can make a bit of a mess. It's so yeah, so you can scoop it Super off. Super easy. This is the easiest way um, to fill a piping bag. I promise you, once you've done it this way, you'll think, oh, why was I trying to like get the spoon in the spoon other it. way? <clears throat> so as much as you can. I mean, we probably should have used another silicon spatula to get all the yeah, 100 percent shit out, but um, but we're nearly there. Yep. Okay. Great. So. so that's, you've obviously put the A oh, right, it's piping bags, isn't it? You can, yeah. you put, sometimes you put the, the shape on the right, end, don't so you do now, it with a squiggly now pattern. Now we'll kind of fold it up. And you've got it, yep. We just um, squeeze it down a bit. Yep. Um, a pair of scissors. Do we have a pair of scissors anywhere? Oh, I think just, uh, do you want to use a knife and just snip it off there? You've got a yeah, big sharp knife over so there. So you want to use a pair of scissors. We've obviously got the other side. We want to crop about, about an inch off okay. um, or so at the end of the piping bag. Um, We've got some scissors or a sharpened knife. Um, so, we're ready to ice the cake. Yeah. Cake's not baked, so fortunately, here's one I made earlier. Aha! We're the Blue Peter moment. A cooling rack that is available from our website. Very nice Dexam cooling rack. So, um, yeah. How much is that? Cake. Don't know, sorry. <laughs> but okay. they're available on our website. So, what we're going to do now is I'll show you what we're trying to achieve. On the, we're trying to achieve these really nice peaks on top of it. Um, it's not essential. You can I basically do what you want. You can spread it over the palette okay. knife. But this is a really nice little technique. So I'm going to demonstrate to you. I'm going to try and demonstrate to you. Again, oh, Gemma's you've the, downgraded the, Gemma to is the master at this. Um, you could get one of the plastic um, freezer bag crimps here to help yep. yourself. Um, but basically, you want to pipe little peaks. Yeah. So, again. sorry. So what the tech is here is while I'm doing a blob, if you do a blob and then pull upwards and then yep. stop, you get a nice little peak. So squeeze it, pull upwards, so and then take squeeze, the pressure off. Stop squeezing, pull up. Squeeze, stop, pull up. Take the pressure off, and you get that nice little peak, which is really cool. That's what so I'm going to hand over to you um, to give it a go. Again, yeah, this is just our take. This is where baking is great, because you can do whatever you want. You can put your own um, spin on things. That's not bad. A little bit more. No, a bit more before you do the, yeah, get in there. It's almost like Perfect. I've done it every day. It's a natural. How many cakes have you iced in your life, Ben? Well, he's getting arrogant now. Look how quick he's going. Fast. How good. Skilled, sir. Skilled. So. See, that is could... honestly the first time I've ever done that. So awesome. that is how easy it is. That is really good. It's really impressed, actually. It's definitely better than my um, attempt at... I mean, to be fair, look, 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 at, look at all these oh. and then this rubbish three here. I feel like taking yours off. <laughs> I think you actually might be slightly better than me hit it. No, um, oh, 100%. So am. we are kind of halfway through and we've got lots to get through. So I'm going to stop you this there. It's mesmerizing. Because that, that stay is textbook. <laughs> but we do have one that we made earlier. I made this one earlier, I think that's yeah. fair to say. So this is one that um, Gemma very interesting. Check okay. out that, Look, see, that's a that's professional. Textbook. Look at the, the fine points on that, that's really good. So this was actually, a, again, a little bit of a sales pitch, but our awesome cake domes, they're really good. I know a lot of you bought them already. Um, they're available on our website, I think they're 10 pounds. Um, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but they're awesome. They clip together, they're really good, they're dishwashable. Um, we love them, we use them all the time. So they're available on our website. So this is nearly the finished cake. So <coughs> the final thing to do yeah. is to break the brittle up. It's probably not quite cooled yet um, mm -hmm. because it needs a little bit longer. But what we've done is we've got some that we've already broken up. Of course you have. So you can cut it up um, or you can bash it up with a rolling pin, break it up, doesn't really matter. Yep. Big shards for like visual effects, but they end up a little bit sharp on your teeth or you can break them up small yeah. as we've done there so, so. Um, and then you just sprinkle them over so we just smashed up okay just right. smashed up the, the brittle that we made am i there, sprinkling yeah. or sprinkle yeah okay so yeah this is perfect look you're at that it. that's you're fantastic getting you're getting my instructions so sprinkle over what this does is it gives it a really nice kind what, of balance what? of textures because you've got that kind of crunch um, and sweetness that goes with the really nice kind of creamy cinnamon icing so boom boom you made a carrot cake thanks man in about 20 minutes. Yeah. So, yeah. Congratulations. Fantastic. Um, I think we're going to cut some. Yes, yeah, do. And it. we've got some plates. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We do need to get a better knife. I baked you on our knife. It's not amazing. Do you not have any for set? I suppose it's, yeah. We don't have knives, no. Yeah, fair enough. You can take that one over to, um, probably should have um, said that we've got Jana and Anna, who's our. Um, Marketing team on the yeah. phones, Patrick, if you want to go and take it over and introduce. Hey, <laughs> hey this looks welcome. Yeah. It is unbelievably cool. good. So Cool, thanks man. Thanks for doing that. Awesome. No worries. Congratulations. That's it, happy days. You're not having any? Natural. I'm not going to have any. I'm okay. going to have some gin and tonic. Um, so, 
Any questions? Have we got any questions coming through about the carrot cake? Any interesting insights on people whose carrots? That, that um, the crunch, yeah. that really, really, really works. Good, yeah, it? it's really, really good. good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Got lots of people okay. shopping tonight. Um, busy on the phones. Yeah, busy, <laughs> busy on the phones. Um, I've got some gin and tonic updates uh -huh. from our question earlier, and this sounds lovely from Cheryl Mack. Gin lemonade with candy floss syrup. Mm. I didn't even awesome. know candy floss, yes. candy floss syrup. Yeah, that sounds pretty. I do not know, Cheryl. Good. If you could let us know where we get candy floss syrup. Um, Alan Wallace's favourite gin is Eden. Mm, Judy loves Bombay Sapphire with yeah, lemonade sorry. and orange tea powder. Old classic, old classic, old classic isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, cool. and what else? One of the got? original gins, wasn't it? Oh, a couple of it? people like Whitley Neal Black Bottle. Oh, I love Whitley Neal. That's yeah. one of my favourites. I haven't tried that one, so really to try that one. And Giles loves gin and milk, which is interesting. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not right. I think it's no, a typo. Is he Giles, <laughs> Stephen, Anthony Walsh, can you confirm this gin and milk gin situation, and milk. please? Giles. 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 Uh, that's a tight Sort this out Giles, Giles is one of my old army it's friends. It's an army joke. Yeah, it's an army joke. I've heard of um, yeah, milk and lime being drunk. It could be a thing. Giles is so a real gin foodie. Gin and milk madness. Yeah. Well, we're seeing him next week, so we will um, find out at the AGM, I think. Yeah. Giles is coming to the AGM? Yeah. yeah. So we'll see you at the AGM, Giles, and you can um, we'll tell us all about We'll serve him a gin and milk. We can prove that he likes it. We test it out. Anyway. I'm going to clear this up um, whilst Patrick and Ben get ready for the big quiz. Mm. Right. Stop and eating Patrick. this one. Luckily, I've made loads of mess for you. So, so if you were watching last week, you'll see we did a fun little quiz. I did. did you I watch saw, last I week? Saw okay, you, so I, saw, you know what to... I saw your sausage rolls, which I thought were amazing. Yeah. I, I, what I loved about them was the the ratio of meat to pastry. Lots of meat. Was insane. I didn't yeah. think it was even possible. Anything's possible. Yeah, Anything's I know. Possible. I, I've no. recalibrated what you think is I can uh, possible. Yeah, no, uh, uh, fair enough. An extra meaty sausage roll, but um, yeah, yeah so it was uh, top tops meat, and I'm, I'm a sausage roll man through and through, so I kind of make yeah. my own ones. But it never occurred to me to put that much meat and then surround it by I the tiniest. I had an awesome sausage roll today from um, Green's Butchers in Pangbourne, which is like you know super watery butcher. I was on a little road trip and had a homemade. Sausage roll awesome. Happy days. And anyway, Scotch, don't get me talking about Scotch eggs. We, uh, we digress. Really, yes, we do. We're going to play a little quiz. So, okay. um, first of all, we're going to make a mug brownie. Okay. And then, in the time it takes to cook said mug, mug brownie, which is 60 seconds in the microwave, fire, you're fire. going to be answering quick fire questions um, on about a, fish. On my special Some of them are subject. loosely related to fish, yeah. Um, and every question you get right, the prize winner is going to get a mug oh, brownie. So no pressure. You're, okay. Yeah, so you're okay. putting mug brownies on, in someone else's um, table. Like so don't. Take don't, be this, I don't, be, no, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Take this very no, seriously. Very seriously. Um, so first of all, we're going to make a mug brownie. So okay. one tablespoon of butter goes into a mug. Should so be this like is softened. Yeah, I, I that? That earlier, yeah, just tablespoon. Softened butter. In, and then two tablespoons of um, milk and tip the, okay. the um, mug brownie in as well. Lovely. Tip the mug brownie, which is just full of deliciousness or, you know, like Joe said, local flour, Belgian chocolate. Oh, so it's got British chocolate sugar, chips in there chocolate well. chips in there, really good chocolate, nice. um, cocoa okay. powder. So mix that up, so it into a really good batter. Do you want to get in there, Joe, and mm. show you Ben's battering technique? <laughs> I'm going to batter you in a minute. There. Yeah, it's very good. good to make. Cool. That's it, that's pretty much it then. And whack it in the microwave and get ready. But the microwave's a bit. Oh, I thought it was in mm. okay. okay. All right, so spoon out. Okey doke. You're going to have to... All oh, right, wait. If you go and take your position. Okay, <clears throat> so I can move to the other side. Patrick, can you just tell everyone the rules of the game again? Okay, so the rules of the game are that I'm going to ask quick fire questions to Ben. They're all related to fish. Every question that Ben gets right, if you're going to pass me the um, I brownies, think. they're going to be... So I can get a maximum of 12 questions right. They're going to be right. stacked up, and whoever wins the quiz wins all the mug brownies and all these awesome prizes. So at the end of this quiz, we're going to ask a question. And it's going to be the first person to answer that question. Now, um, due to sort of delays in how Facebook Technology, updates yep. their things, I don't know, somewhere in the, in the interweb, um, stuff goes on. But whoever answers the question first will win the prize. And that's whichever one we see pop so up on our, comes up in your feed on our feed. Okay. Yeah. So it might not, so you might answer it first, but whichever one pops up on our feed, all's fair in love and war and mug brownie quizzes. OK, so are you ready? Let's do it. Um, does someone want to press start on the... I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Multitasking, a man that multitasks. The so, I'm the I will. Are go. you ready? Yeah. 
what fish is often put onto pizzas? Uh, tuna. Incredible. I'll do that, thank you. Tuna. Apart, tuna. Apart, what fish lives in a monastery? A monastery fish. No, a monk fish. What is the largest Monsters. fish? Um, a very large fish. A whale shark. Which fish can sing even if nailed to a wall? Um, Billy the fish. Yes, big mouth Billy Bass. Big mouth Billy Which Bass. Which fish is a delicacy in Japan, if, but if prepared incorrectly can kill you um, to death? Puff, puffer fish. Puffer fish. Yellow fin, blue fin, albacore. Tuna. Correct. What type of fish was Nemo? Um, he was, uh, I don't know, a little blue fish, no. dorsal fish. No, what, uh, clownfish. Clown fish. What clown type of fish. fish would Danny Dyer say that he'd been done up like a... Cooper, son! <laughs> yeah. Shut up! What's a fish's favourite card game? A fish's card... Uh, fish. Go fish. Go fish. What's a fish's... No, traditionally, which fish does caviar come from? Um, 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 sturgeon. Correct. What mayonnaise-type sauce is often served with fried fish? Um, mayonnaise. No. With fried fish. Fish chips. No. Fish That's chips. It. Mayonnaise. That's it. Mushroom peas. Tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. I got that. that. That's a decent number. How, how did you get, Jay? Is that a world six. record? Six. six. Is one, that good? two, what three, four, five, six, seven. seven. What was the record last, last week? Six. So Clear I am the champion. champion. Just to be clear, you've beaten that was Joe good fun. I enjoyed that. business and you've beaten him at quizzes. That's it, yeah. I so, quiz. now listening carefully, this is the question to get to win the whole prize. So you get all baked tins um, for medium sized baking kits and you get Ross and Ross is awesome um, curing kits. The salmon one, yep. which you're going to show me in a second, and the bacon one, and seven, not six, seven mug brownies. Okay, so, so the question is, apart from the great storm of 1987, which fish can predict the weather? Okay, so apart from the great storm of 1987, which fish can predict the weather? And there's so, a 20 second delay. There is a 20 delay, second delay, 20 so, second delay. Um, um, I, let's go through some of your answers that were awful. You didn't get which fish lives in a monastery, that was my best that, one. That was, poor, that was poor, that was poor. There's a lot of pressure though to... Um, to which fish um, is often what, what given you? as a prize, I'm just filling time, uh, filling, filling time for entertainment right, purposes. Right, right, right. Which fish is often um, given as a prize at the fairground? Uh, goldfish. Yeah, controversy. Goldfish. Other, yeah. Um, and what fish was how many Jaws? No, don't Jaws. ask me the question. No, no, when master, student becomes master. Yeah, um, what fish is, uh, what's the heaviest fish? The ever heaviest caught, fish? Ever caught on a single line. You just, it's <laughs> just, it's just <laughs> developing. Like, yeah. So you don't it's know a, that. So uh, I get to put an extra one on there for that. It was a marlin. Yes, well done, good shout. 300 kilograms. Yeah, that's it. No, I don't know. I don't cool. know do, do we have an answer here? So I just keep on doing fish questions. Do we have a winner? We've got yeah, some conferring in oh. our judging panel. That one. Okay. okay is, yeah, yeah. But that's what keeps everything on tender hooks, um, What's your favourite fish? My favourite fish. I've got, I've got a winner. Okay, oh, right. okay good. Thank goodness. K Seal. K Seal. K Seal. K Seal. K Seal. Awesome. K -seal. Well, okay. Congratulations, K Seal. Congratulations. Well done. Um, you get all this. We'll send it to you. I think you need to send over your address yeah. and drop us in a, a private message. Um, team at bakedin.co.uk, just drop us an email or private Facebook and we'll um, get this shipped right <laughs> yeah. out to you. Yeah, congratulations, awesome. that should set you up with prezzies and food, foodie stuff for, for quite a while. So yeah. that's the quiz, so now you are going to take me through a salmon curing kit, we're going to cure some salmon, that is eat right. some salmon, Joe's going to eat some salmon and um, we'll have a good time. That's it, let's make it happen, okay cool. Perfect. Well, um, so first of all, why don't you stand over there? And we'll just get some boards out so that we know what we're doing. Some bits and pieces. So I guess the first thing to do would be to, let me just get rid of that there. So the first thing to do is to open up the kit that we've got here that we're giving away and just to show what we're going to be doing. So just to reiterate what this is, this is a, a curing kit that is going to show you, well, you're going to be able to make your own home cured salmon. So it's not smoked salmon, it's cured salmon. We'll come on to that in a minute. So. The kit that we are doing as part of this whole promotion today is the Bacon Kit Original. This is the XL in the competition. The difference is this has got six cures in it, whereas the one we're doing in the, in the, um, the deal today, 50% off, has got three. And those three cures that we're going to be doing are we've got a beetroot cure, we've got a gin cure, and we've got a smoked cure. So to show you what's in the box, we've got the instructions. So that's really easy to use. Uh, we've got some, um, some gloves and we've got some curing bags. And then, as you can see here, we have got each of the cures that come in the box. So there are six in this one. 
and so we've got a citrus cure, we've got a Cotswold gin cure, we've got a dill and mustard cure, we've got a um, Sancho pepper cure, and then we've got the beetroot cure and the smoked cure. What's the uh, Sancho pepper one? All Sancho about? pepper, yeah. So people might necessarily heard of. The Sancho pepper, so you're thinking sort of umami flavours going into that, yeah, obviously nice. salt and sugar, and it gives it a nice kind of sort of bite on the citrus flavours of it. So awesome. it works well, works very well. So. For the purposes of this, we're going to be doing the salmon, sorry, the beetroot cure for salmon, which is this one here. So I've already got one of those out, so I'm going to pop all this back in the box. And we'll just keep the instructions so that Patrick knows what he's doing. And we've got some gloves, so let's just keep that for now and pop that out of the way. So have you done any kind of curing at all at home? Or? I don't think I've cured anything in my life. Okay. Really? <laughs> well, today <laughs> is the first. <laughs> Oh, really? True. Really? Is that what we were doing? Um, Joe used the, the bacon one. I've, I've eaten the bacon yeah. cured one, which is awesome. So the, um, the bacon one is just like just my proper bacon. Yeah. It makes you sort of not want to eat watery naff bacon anymore. Well, that's that's um, it. Yeah, with bacon, it's yeah. about um, pushing all the kind of nasties out of the moisture to get a nice yeah. kind of dry, concentrated bacon. Yeah, it's just but, completely different. So. But that's it. So. Yeah. Effective, what we're going to be doing today is make it. I'm just going to grab the salmon out of the fridge. Good work, it's been sitting. Question yeah. From um, one of our Annas, many Annas in the office. Hi, Anna. Three. Um, and she's asking, can we use any other type of fish um, with the salmon kit? Yeah, mm. yeah. So when you're curing, Anna, um, it's basically about having the right amount of salt sugar mix for the right weight of um, meat that you're going to use, certainly with fish. So you could use, as long as you follow, in our instructions it says, basically take 600 grams of salmon and then you use the pack that's, the, the bag that's in there. And that is then used for exactly that weight. So the short answer is yes, you could use it on any fish at all really. You could cure tuna if you wanted to, um, trout, we get a lot of requests for trout. Um, it just ideally needs to be the same sort of shape. So hopefully that answers your question, but it's a good question for sure, we get that one a lot. Um, okay, so we're going to start off, uh, we're going to do the beetroot cure, which is this one here. So this is a mixture of um, uh, beetroot, obviously, um, some dill, it's got some other flavours in there, some salt and some sugar. So that's going to all come out, it's going to stain the salmon really nicely, so it's going to have a nice brink, uh, pink colour to it. So, first things first, Patrick, mm. I want you to put on these lovely little gloves I've got for you, which come in the kit, if you pop those on to start with. Obviously you've washed your hands already. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get you to start with the salmon. So I have bought some salmon from our fishmonger and it's 600 grams. So if you imagine you get a half side of salmon, about that big, and then if you cut it in half, basically, that will pretty much be 600 grams, roughly speaking. So um, that's how it works. So what we're going to do, first of all, is let's just pull this back. So I want you to, first things first, if you take that and I want you to cut it across the middle about there. Yeah. Yep, that's perfect. Cut it all the way through. And this has the skin on the bottom side. We're going to keep the skin on there because that, that comes in handy later for chopping. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now, if you pick them both up for me. That's great. What we'll do is so we're going to lay the instructions says to lay the um, cling film down. Let's start that again. Um, lay the cling film down over there. So if you pop that down there, just next door to each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover both the halves in cure mm -hmm. and then we're going to sandwich them on top of it. So you're going to put that bit on top of that bit. So we'll make a little salmon sandwich, if you will. Okay. And we're gonna cover it all in there. Okay, so if you wanna get pouring. So this is the mixture. We've got salt, um, we've got sugar, we've got some big chunks of salt crystal, mm, uh, beetroot powder, dill, all the things. So if you've had uh, Gravelac salmon in a restaurant before as a starter, which is basically a salt and sugar mix with um, some fresh dill in there, we're gonna have some of those flavors in there as well. But beetroot is a really good classic combination for salmon. It's quite, um, it's quite hearty and it really mixes well with the salmon flavour. That's it, that's perfect. So it's all going on there. That's great. And if you could just give it a little rub on as well. That's great, perfect. That's it, okay. Right. And then what we'll do is if we just bring it back a little bit. So we want to get some underneath. So if you, um, yeah, if you pick that up, that's it, and just jump it on the top there. So. Push it on top. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, no, sorry, put it on top. Uh, like that. like That's that. it, perfect, lovely. So what are the and gloves for then? Sorry? Just, to, um, just for cleanliness. Like yeah, or cleanliness, or uh, just because it's, mm -hmm. um, it's raw salmon, yeah. it's just a good idea to okay. be a little bit cleanful. Yep, that's it, so rub that in. <coughs> that's it, okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do now is if you make sure it's, you can kind of just do that, mm -hmm. add a bit of that, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll just bring this across to here. And then I'll take over on this bit, just because you've got your hands in there. 
So you've got your salmon um, on there, and we're just basically going to wrap it up in the cling film. That's it. Oh, got a bit oh, spilled at the end. It does sometimes happen like that. That's it. Yep, and then what we do is we cut it. And then what we do is we'll just wrap it the other way. Perfect. That's it. So this is all going to go inside a bag as well. So we're all going to be sorted in a sec. Okay, yep. What's the difference between curing and smoking? So curing and smoking. And that was from Josh. 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 Hi, Josh. Yeah. How are you doing? Um, curing and smoking. So smoking is where you hang salmon out and you smoke it. So you can cold smoke it or you can hot smoke it. Cold smoking won't cook it. It's effectively where you're doing indirect smoking. So the heat doesn't cook it, it's just the smoke flavors it. If you do hot smoking, that will cook it at the same time. Um, curing is when you're basically cooking it with salt is the best way to describe it, I think. So the salt will basically, it, it sinks into the meat, it pushes the moisture out and effectively cooks it. So we can eat this raw, but it won't be raw anymore because it's cured. I hope that covers it, explains it. But if you want me any, to clarify any further, please just put we'll it in the messages. Further, can we just remind everyone about the offer you guys have got yes, for this? Yes, what a great idea. Yeah, so this is the salmon curing kit, part of the baked in offer. We have got um, the kit that we're doing on the offer is the bacon curing, sorry, the salmon curing kit original. That's got a beetroot cure, it's got a gin cure, and it's got a smoked cure. Each one is going to do this amount of salmon. You've got the instructions in there. It's a gift of the year previously, and we're doing that at half price. So I think uh, just to remind myself, we've got that going at £10 plus postage and packaging. It's normally 20 quid. So that is going to be on our website, rossandrossfood.co.uk. Go into the shop and put in the code BAKEDIN50. And that is live until tomorrow, which the date is... 21st of May. 21st of May, so midnight mm -hmm. tomorrow. So you've got just a little over 24 hours to get involved in that. So thanks for the, for the prompt on that. Oh, just a good gift, I think, because I think I'd like to consider myself a foodie. Yeah. I, can, I cook things all the time, like every single yeah. weekend. I'm constantly just thinking about what am I cooking next, what type of cuisine am I trying next, but I've never cured anything, so I guess... It might be one of those processes that's quite almost intimidating to do, hence why no one does it. Therefore, having a kit, you know, it would be super rewarding. Once you do it yourself, it's like, you know, it's not it's doing something different. Exactly, from exactly. It's, it's guiding you into trying yeah. something, using it. It's the same with all of your baiting kits. Yeah. People think, I don't know how this works. I can't, and I don't think I've ever been around in someone's house and they've said, someone said, oh, here's some salmon that I've cured myself. I don't know. Well, that, that is one of the things that is really great about this, is if you are... If you're, I mean, obviously it works really well as a gift for any kind of foodie. So for like you, mm. you would actually kind of go ahead and start making and using it. But actually, mm. if you're, and I'll show this later when we've got the end result. If you're having mates around for a dinner party or a lunch, or you're doing canapes at Christmas, and you produce your own home cured salmon, mm. you get that kind of chest beating yeah, exactly. pride from it as well. You know, like mm. when you do a really good Sunday lunch and people sit down and go, that's awesome. You get the same from this. And you, and you beat your chest I in front of them. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like at, the part, at the dinner party. Eat the salmon. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's, I know, it looks really good. I and mean, we'll see cool. that in a second. So. Just to revise where we are, we've got the salmon, we've poured on the cure, we've got a little bit of excess here, we've yeah. poured on the cure, uh, we've wrapped it in cling film, and we're going to put that into the curing bag, which is just a sealed bag, so we pop that in there. And then we're going to put that in the fridge, and we're going to put a plate on top of it, or something, a weight. Right. And that, what that does is that just pushes the moisture out, because what we want to do in a curing process is to push the moisture out to make it stiff yeah. uh, and cook it with the salt. So that's what's going to happen there. So that goes in the fridge for four days. After two days, take it out. There'll be quite a lot of liquid in there. Just drain that off and then put it in for another two days. Okay. And that's it. So that takes, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. Five, 10 minutes. That's done. That is pretty much 99% of it. So I have a small technical glitch. We're going to have to slot this camera in. Okay. So if everyone just bear, you guys crack on. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Um, how does the moisture come out there? Because surely it's all been wrapped in the cling well, that, film. Well, that is exactly what curing is. So curing yeah. is about pushing moisture yeah, yeah. out. So the salt goes in, dries it out, and pushes the moisture out. Yeah, yeah. So the moisture just comes out. Osmosis, Osmosis. is the magic word. Yeah. Yes, it is, sir. So what I've done here is I have then, basically, you take that out after two days, and you rinse it under the tap mm -hmm. and dry it off. And then that's what we've got here. So let's just get rid of this quickly. Should I take my gloves off? Uh, you can do if you want to, or you can keep yeah. them on. Your hands are clean, so if you want to carry on without the gloves, you're entirely welcome to. But but so that looks an awesome, deep red. Is, is there a camera at all now? Is there? This one on here. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can see it's like a changed, like a really lovely, like deep red colour, isn't it? Yep, that's so it. it. So, so it looks really attractive as well. That's exactly the thing. So what do I want to get it out? Yeah, if the... you get it out and pop it out, so you can see here. 
Um, this is the cured salmon. So, yeah. um, so the texture's completely changed as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice and, nice and firm, so it's going to be able to slice really, really easily. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we're going to get you to do now. So we're going to switch this two ways. So yeah. I'm going to demonstrate with the first one. So again, this is a, a, exactly the same amount that we cured in the first half, so about five, 600 grams. And we're going to get quite a lot of that here to, to and then we're going to put it, mix it with two dishes. We're going to do um, uh, a canapé, a Bellini canapé. A canape. Canape, indeed. Um, or, and we're going to do a kind of a little smoked salmon start, well, excuse me, a cured salmon starter, which is a great way to kind of impress your friends or to, you know, if you're having friends around for lunch, you do that with a, a salad. So I am using my Sunday carving knife, mm. which is uh, long and thin and very sharp, obviously, and that is the easiest way to carve it. So what you'll do is um, we're going to just basically do strides like that. So you hold it in this hand and just basically do little cuts like that. There we go, it takes a bit of a while to get going. So you're almost offering no resistance at all. And just slide it off like that. So I'm assuming you want a super sharp knife. You Is do, this that's why I've used my Sunday kind of best knife, so that's it. So can you get, you can get special, like super thin, oh, you can, so like, slicey, like a slicey one. Yeah, yeah, would that be good with it as well? That, yeah, absolutely, but I mean, the, the idea is really to try and get people to kind of do it with what they have at home to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. So. Give that a go. It takes a bit of practice, but oh, don't, don't patch do, not, do nice, do nice long strides. So use the whole of the knife. And what about skin? Do you need the skin on before you cure? Uh, you absolutely need the skin on. Yeah, you yeah. do because as hopefully will be visible. But Patrick's um, Patrick's rubbish at this. I want to get it a little bit flatter that's first, it. so I could do longer well, ones. I'll tell you so what, I was just, just tidying up your bit of mess first, it. and then I was going to. So yeah, if you do, I mean, you can't quite see, but the skin is still on here at the bottom. That just makes it hold it all together. So when you're cutting it, it works really well. Smells really good. It does smell good and it tastes amazing as well. So it takes a bit of practice, but basically you've got it for a while. So if I'm we just keep slicing. Okay, we'll stop stop there and what we'll do is we'll just change it around. Stop. Okay, well you keep going. What I'll do then is I'll get um, a little plate together. So we're doing a, a little starter here of uh, salmon. So, so I find them um, like canapes quite stressful. I'm so greedy that like when I go to a party and the, and the canapes come out and you can see other people getting them. You're like, oh, I want that one. That's and then the someone else has got them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the stress of going to a you're wedding. You're trying to talk to someone at the corner of your eye. I can see someone with some smoked salmon, and yeah. you're like, yeah, that's really interesting what you're yeah, yeah. saying about the. About the and, you, and someone else has got your canapes this, over this, there. This drive is where you're going to position yourself very well at weddings. Yes. I think there's a Homer Simpson sketch where he's, you know, or you're a boy, come here. Yeah, 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 which you, is basically. And you end up having to be like, like literally like grabbing the, yeah, yeah. the waiters, by like, come is, back here. This come is back my here world. with them. Yeah, yeah. You make friends with them. That's the first thing you do at weddings is make friends with a canopy. Right? Oh, yeah, that's probably a better idea. Make friends rather than like. Yeah, don't, don't, don't cause trouble. Right, let's get some lemon out of the fridge. One second. That's maybe the best one. So, so it, gets, it, it gets better, it gets better. So hopefully you can see it's, you've not made a complete hash of this. I suppose there's always a risk, isn't there? Yeah. So what we'll do then is, so we'll get the canopy. So the idea is that you've got your... You've got some token salad on there. Yeah, absolutely, you know it, right. So, so you've made your own smoked salmon starter for your guests who are coming around for dinner. And they all come around and they say, oh my God, where, was, going, where, did, where did, did you get, get this? Where salmon did you get the salmon? Exactly. And you say, You're I'm like, going well, well, and that's when you start beating yeah, your and, chest. And you beat your chest about it. Absolutely. That's 100% it. So that would be, <laughs> that would be your kind of, your Look starter, perhaps, where you get to do that. And that, you know, it could be a, a little lunch for you. Yeah, it could be awesome. anything else on that front. Right. What we'll do is we'll pop all this in here and then we'll just try a different chopping technique for the, um, for the can apes. I can't so stop slicing, it's no, quite, it's it's quite fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So let's it's pop like, those in there. I just want to get better and better with it. So we should have, we should have practiced, we didn't practice this with, uh, with them earlier. So, okay, so the next thing we're going to make is our, um, our canapes. And so for that we need, I've just bought some uh, shop-bought uh, bellinis, but obviously you can make those up. I don't, do you do a bellini kit? No, it's not maybe there's good. something, it's I don't know, maybe there's flowers. something in that. Yes, it <laughs> was, exactly. <laughs> yeah, good point. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Well, um, so cleaning. we've got that. We've got some creme fraiche, which is ready to go. So Patrick, what I want you to do is please to, if you take the uh, bellinis, and then we've got two teaspoons. So I'd like for you to do. Can we put them straight onto here. Yeah. Yep. So we'll just get a little dollop of creme fraiche, something like that. Yep. 
onto yeah. those. Yeah, if you do that with all of those for me. All or, of them. Or a good handful of them, yeah. And then what I'll do is I will come alongside and I will just do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a kind of a more of a sort of sushi looking cut, which is rather than sort of diagonal slice, I'm just going to do um, some sort of slicing that is a bit thicker and uh, more firm, I suppose. Like that. So we'll do a couple of those. And there we go. So Joe, why don't you like salmon? You're just not a salmon fan. I just don't eat fish really at all. It's just not my thing. Um, I don't mind, I'm a bit of a heathen and I, I'll eat fish from the fish and chip shop. I it's can't believe that's like being a vegetarian. And I really like sausages. scampi. I really like scampi. And, so you're not. Uh, which is also deep fried. And there might be a, there might be a theme I think to this. We've, I think we've um, found the... Um, generally, I don't really like fish. The reason here. Okay, so... But this one, I think... It does look... To, it though. looks very attractive. I know I'm not going to like it, but it looks really attractive. But this is going to change. <laughs> this might change your mind. Yeah, it okay. might Actually, I, I used to hate smoked mm -hmm. salmon. And um, someone... Uh, it's really cool proper old tr traditional smoking company gave me proper smoked salmon and it wasn't like the oily naff stuff you, you, you'd get from yep. the supermarket and it genuinely I started liking it this is going to be your time I yeah, maybe yes. think so. <laughs> he'd actually have to try it to no, he's going to have to try some yeah maybe I'm sure it's good. <laughs> so you see we're getting you've got a nice bit of creme fraiche on there you can mix a bit of lemon into the creme fraiche if you wanted to to give it kind of a nice little flavor if you're yeah. making these um, and you had some vegetarians or people who didn't like salmon what else would you do to go with them what, instead of yeah, salmon? Well, yeah, again, instead, well, do something yeah. completely different. Do you wouldn't just do a... Some, you wouldn't just do a... Um, spring rolls. No, you do this, look. You, get you just do a... Yeah, he's in there. No. Carrot on top of it or something. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's, not, that's <laughs> okay. not how it works at all. So you've got something that is, you know, reasonably delicate um, if you're doing it for your guests. So, okay, so you kind of go around that and then we've got some pepper. Well, you missed one out. I have yet, so is that doing just, your... Yeah, I can't handle that. Let's put a double on That's there. it. And then we'll put a little squeeze of lemon on it as well, just to kind of take that through. So you would, there we go. I think if you've, um, if you've cured your own beetroot salmon, I don't think you want to do too much to it, do you? You don't want no, to start like, absolutely. Because you've gone to all that effort. People want to taste you know, what, you, what you've made. That's actually, and we've got little nice little um, plates. Where's the cake stand? Has it gone away? Here it is. So, and your friends come around and you're serving your champagne cocktails or you're having a lunch. Mm. That's what you've got. You've got your canapes ready to go. Mm. And you know, it didn't take very long. Um, it's all kind of in the box. Everything works really well. They taste amazing. Well, I guess the proof of the pudding will be in that we're eating in a minute. But that's basically, that's kind of how it all starts. Cool. So give it a go. Joe, sure. Yeah, I'll take these over to the guys well, at the table, do, do, do. the tasting go. table. Let's go. Let's give it a go. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take it over. I'll take it over. Um, <laughs> question for Caroline. How long does it last for the salmon? So that'd be good for cured? another sort of uh, five Thank days you. or so. I'll take it all. Are you taking it all? I'm yeah, taking it all. Uh, no about, about five days, really. Um, That's not bad. So if this, when, this, when you buy the salmon fresh, obviously, you do the cure, you want to be eating it within three to five days. To be honest, you'll struggle not to eat it all almost mm, yeah. as you're cutting it, because yeah, that's nice. what happens to me. I'm just <laughs> pretending to eat it. I love it. I appreciate that, man. That's all right. But I genuinely, I'm. You're to, surprised, aren't you? I did I not used to like um, smoked salmon at all. I still don't like going buy it from the supermarket. But um, that's just yeah, it's just completely different. It's mm. like uh, it's just it's not oily. It's nice and like uh, it's like got a firm texture. Firm it's still got the sweet, dry sweet and, and the sugar flavour. That's the like, thing that's getting the right mix. It's together. moist and like meaty, but it's not like sloppy and oily. It's yep. just lovely, isn't it? That's well, that's good quality mm. curing. That's when the moisture has been pushed out by by the curing by the yeah, yeah. So that's it, that's a Ross and Ross um, curing kit for salmon, that's the original one. You're gonna have a beetroot cure in there, you're gonna have a gin cure, and you're gonna have a smoked cure. Um, all really simple to make, great gift for a foodie. You've got Father's Day coming up, could be a great option for that. Um, doing it at half price at the moment on the Ross and Ross website, rossandrossfood.co.uk with the code BAKEDIN50. Um, and it's going to be ten pounds plus postage. And the other thing with all your kits, like ours, is they make great gifts. Absolutely. We're so all, Father's all Day kind of, coming up. We constantly do battle <laughs> on the Gift mm -hmm. of the Year award. Um, I think we're winning at the moment. I don't know. They keep stealing our <laughs> awards at various shows that we do, which is a bit. Um, we've got used to it now, really, to be honest with you. But um, so hopefully we'll keep going head to head on those. Those sort I'm of sure things. Sure we as well. will. I'm sure we will. So um, thank you, Ben, uh, for doing that, and I'm sure it was delicious. Just on, on a. <laughs> 
not a fish person. Um, we've got some time for some questions. Before we do that, we'll just remind you of the offers we've got. Yep. We've got our baked in bundle, so two of our past baking kits. Um, I know one of these is a baked water tart, and this is a apple and pecan buns. Um, that's just two random ones I picked off the shelf. So it could be anything from our previous recipes. It just won't be this month's carrot cake. But you can buy those on the website as Baker of the Month. But the offer for these is two boxes for £10, including okay. delivery. Um, normally £9 each plus two ninety nine shipping. So that's an awesome deal. Um, decent shelf lives. Um, you know, you know there's, I'm not sure exactly what's out there, but I know there's definitely some chocolate cheesecake brownies kicking around. There's some apple and pecan buns. Okay, okay, okay. There's some bacon apple tarts. There's um, see maybe some can... whoopie pies. I'm rainbow not sure cake. exactly, but we're going to randomly pick two and we'll send them out. So awesome. um, that offer is live to tomorrow night, Tuesday the 21st at midnight. Um, we've got Ben's offer that we've just talked about. We have yep. one other offer, which is the Baking Club. So if you're not already a member of the Baking Club and you want to try this out, um, it's a different, unique kit sent out at about, about the middle of each month. Um, kept as a surprise. Uh, if you buy each month, it's nine pounds a month, including shipping. Um, or you can buy a three, a six, or a twelve-month option. I think the twelve-month option is the cheapest and brings it down to around about seven pound fifty a month. So it's really good value. Madness, madness. absolutely giving, madness. Giving it away. Where do I sign um, up? But you know, honestly, it's really good quality ingredients. It's really good. Every, you know, anyone that's on the on the live, you know, some some testaments there. If anyone thinks it's a great thing to do, two ninety nine for your first box. Use. Um, Facebook Live 299, all one word. Um, that offer is ongoing. So for anyone watching this Facebook Live, even if you're watching it not live, that offer's still good. The other two offers are only good till midnight uh, tomorrow night, which is Tuesday the 21st. So do we have any questions, um, Jana, from the audience? Um, nope. Nope, there's no way. I, I asked them all as we went along. There's no way to know the second during. delay. So I'd if like you do to know anything, everyone's um, like favorite <laughs> canapes. So like I, I like doing a like crostini with um, like a pea puree with chili feta on top. Nice. Yeah. And now I'm gonna do <laughs> I normally like maybe three at Christmas. Yep, yep. Do one of those. Maybe maybe you might. Yep, yep. Sure, yeah, yeah. Sure. A salmon we, we can do curing that. kit. On I the can way. see you got some rainbow um, cakes over there. We can maybe do it. And then maybe I need one more. So, so it, it, what's your favourite canape? <laughs> um, anyone want to joke? I'm joke. Joking, so, right, and it has to be done really well because if you get it wrong, it's awful. But I've only had it once. Sounds high I've never, pressure. I've Christmas. never made this myself. Is it a sausage, sausage, it. sausage, sausage it's not roll sausage, or something? No, but it's basically it's little it's mini it's Yorkshire safe. puddings. I guess you'd make them in a yep. kind of um, you get mini, a mini Yorkshire pudding tray, mini please. Yorkshire pudding thing. Really small Yorkshire puddings with yep. a little bit of really nice rare roast beef. beef. Sauce so you top. like a Sunday Amazing. lunch, but in a snack. A miniature mm. Sunday lunch. Fish. I kind of really agree with that. Really small minutes. It makes you feel like a giant when you're eating it. So. Okay, yeah. okay, fair. I do, I, I, <laughs> for me, it's, um, well, we do, we do a pigs in blankets dust for, the, for that, but that's part of the race dinner hmm. uh, range. For me, it is, it's a Scotch egg, a quail's Scotch egg. Ooh, a quail's yeah. Scotch egg. Yeah. I've been to egg. a wedding Ooh. where... You'd go to lots of weddings, and I can remember the canapes at nearly every wedding I've ever been to. Yeah. I've been to something like 60 or 50 odd weddings, so if yeah. I could uh, Popular. run it down. I've um, been to 51 <laughs> weddings. Well, I'm a bit older than you, to be yeah. fair. Uh, you'll help for that soon. Um, yeah, so for me, it's um, it's that. Cool. But what for you, other than that, you're, you're going to do a brand new one, or? What do you mean? You're going to do a brand new. The, the P, the what P, P got, Jana, the what we got? Um, we've <laughs> got no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I want people to tell oh, me that. Loves <laughs> crushed avocado with tiger prawns on oh. a bellini. Mm. On a bellini? Nice yeah. Okay. And nice. what else have we got? Uh, bacon and brie. Bacon and brie. Classic. 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 Yeah, good call. Cool. Uh, anything yeah. with bacon in it. About right, little, um, little uh, mini like, bruschettas with nice um, kind of tomato and yeah, balsamic vinegar yeah. on top and a little bit of, a bit of mozzarella. Nice yeah. too. Yeah, uh, you can do figs <laughs> with prosciutto and blue uh, cheese. You, that is, some, you bake those. You have those figs and bacon wrapped in yeah. bacon. Oh, and that now we're well. talking. That's, mm, that's getting me in the Christmas mood. But that's the problem with Christmas, isn't it? You mm -hmm. overindulge enormously, but it's um, it's the best stuff ever. We did yeah. a um, we do a roast potato oil. So this is a rapeseed oil yeah. with garlic and smoke <laughs> in it and rosemary. So you get this really lovely smell to it. And we've done um, sort of little canapes, kind of canapé pots at parties where we've done the yeah. roast potato oil. Uh, with like a fondue sauce on it or something like that. So it's a, you've got to think of maybe of different ways of doing canapé. But I suppose it's all about the one hand, isn't <coughs> it? That's the definition of a canapé. Can, yeah, yeah. can it cool. be snuffled in while you're holding a champagne? I'm going to cut you off there because we're just please, over the hour. Please, um, oh God. We're still, do, we're still getting, our, getting our bearings, getting this into an hour. So thanks everyone for sticking with us. Hopefully it was interesting. Um, hopefully some of you guys will take up these awesome offers. Yep. Um, thanks very much. Thanks for having yeah, me. Pleasure. Thanks, thanks for coming. Really, really appreciate thanks, it. Yeah, awesome. appreciate Cheers. that. Good to know that I'm uh, number seven. I am still the highest scoring 
Yeah, um, hold the leader, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so that. thanks everyone for, for joining. Um, hopefully we'll see you next month. We look forward to seeing everyone's um, bakes from the Baking Club. The pictures should start getting posted now in the Facebook group and on the Facebook page, on the Facebook page, on the Facebook page first. And then we'll have a little competition. So we're looking forward to seeing those um, tomorrow morning. So uh, I guess, thanks for me and thanks for you guys. What's the sign off? Hey, we wave. just wave. Okay. We wave, we're waving.